Well, good evening, viewers. This is Brother Dwayne Myers once again coming to you from uh, Calvary Baptist Church in Mesquite, Texas, and are looking forward to bringing you um, Wednesday night, May the 13th, uh, lesson in the book of Philippians. Uh, it was so good to be back in the Lord's house last Sunday, and boy, we had such a wonderful time. We had a good crowd, and uh, the Lord truly blessed us uh, by being able to be back into the Lord's house as well. Uh, let's pray as we begin to uh, go into the teaching today. Dear Lord, we do come thanking you, Lord, for the day and the rain that you blessed us with. And Lord, we pray now that you would just uh, use this time that we're able to be together, Lord, that it would be pleasing unto you. And Lord, we just love you so much and, and ask that, uh, Lord, that you would just lead, guide, and direct this teaching tonight or this evening, Lord, and that you would use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to be meeting tonight. Uh, at the church of course at 7 o'clock just regular time but for those that are unable to be with us on Wednesday night service uh, this is for you and for anybody else that happens to be uh, viewing uh, I hope and pray that uh, you get a, a tremendous blessing by what you hear today uh, it brings us to uh, Philippians chapter 1 in verses 12 and 13 is where we're going to pick up at and we find that in this we find the distribution of the gospel uh, in and through uh, what the Lord has to say to us through our the Apostle Paul Paul said but I would ye should understand brethren that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Uh, Paul was trying to, to get them to realize that uh, in his, uh, he mentions the gospel uh, in no less than six times in this first chapter. Uh, the gospel is not uh, confirmation, baptism, following the Ten Commandments, obeying the golden rule, communion, or confession. But it is the good news that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the grave the third day according to the Scriptures. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, we find... Paul wrote, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you that the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 13, uh, 3 says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. In verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So this good news is the good news of what Christ did for each of us and the brethren there in Philippi as well um, on the cross at Calvary. Uh, he wants them to reiterate the very fact that uh, he takes pleasure in his persecutions because uh, these persecutions resulting in someone else's hearing of the gospel uh, and the hearing about the Lord Jesus and what he did for them. Um, it's possible that God will, replace, will place us in perhaps a circumstance and undesirable or unwanted as far as we are concerned, but uh, a place of his choosing that we might win someone to the Lord. So Paul basically here in in verse uh, uh, 12, he, he's telling them, but whatever has happened to them, he wants them to understand that 
hey, uh, the furtherance of the gospel is coming out of it. So his being in prison bonds is literally, uh, he is still fulfilling uh, the Great Commission. And, uh, you know, many a Christian take advantage of God-directed illness on a hospital bed as uh, has and they have led a patient, another patient or perhaps a nurse or even a doctor to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. So when we get these things, we realize that we're to use the situation we're in to furtherance of the gospel or to be able to still tell someone about Jesus. God has put these things in our life perhaps so that we can be able to use them as a greater uh uh, way to present the gospel to those that may not have any other way of hearing. Um, you know, Paul's bonds were manifest in the palace that he said there in verse 13. Uh, he had the opportunity to spread the gospel in that place. The palace was the uh, uh, Praetorian, which literally means a body of people or a place. When it has the meaning of a palace, it has three meanings. Uh, for one, the general headquarters in the camp. Uh, or two, the emperor's palace. Or three, a large home of a wealthy man. When describing people, it is used as the Praetorian guard. They were the Imperial Guard of Rome, uh, a unit of 16,000 men that served 12 to 16 years in this unit. Uh, they were concentrated in the city of Rome and they became the kingmakers. Their nominee was uh, made uh, emperor every single time. They had a way of pressuring the population, basically. And when Paul arrived in Rome, it was the perfect of the Praetorian guard that he was handed over to. Paul had an inroad into this palace by being chained to a Roman guard. And some of these guards ended up getting saved. Uh, in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 22, it says, All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. So we notice there in Philippians uh, chapter 1 and verse 12 again that Paul says the things that happened furthered the gospel instead of fettering it. The word furtherance is procopi and this is the first time that it appears in the Bible and it is also used in, and it's only used uh, in the book of Philippians. It's especially used for the progress of an army or an expedition. It is the noun from the verb uh, prokeptian, which means to cut down in advance. It is the verb which is used to describe the cutting away of trees, the undergrowth, the barriers, which would hinder the advancement of an army. So it carries the idea with it of striking forward or progressing. Paul's imprisonment literally did nothing but open the door to new spheres of presenting the work of the Lord Jesus and the activity in places he would have never, ever been able to penetrate on his own. So we find that Paul invaded Caesar's army, amen, uh, from the inside. And by doing so, he led many to the Lord. Uh, the things that happened, they cleared the way for Paul to reach Caesar's household. Uh, the gospel was advancing. The words which happened are in italics and are not in the Greek text. The word happened conveys the idea 
uh, of something coming to pass by chance without previous expectation or expectation rather a thing is said to happen when there is no plan or design in God's dealings with the Christian there is never an element of chance I want you to be able to realize that nothing that God does is by chance it is pre-planned pre-ordained and pre-described unto the doing of it uh, God had a purpose for Paul and Paul was bound but the word of God was not bound in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 Paul wrote wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds but the word of God is not bound you know God's word is not bound uh, perhaps to to one translation or to even one language. He has preserved his word in thousands of Greek and Hebrew manuscripts and the uh, translations of scripture into hundreds of languages, not just English. Uh, and God's word is not bound to these narrow limitations. So uh, the brave apostle was in bonds but he was bound in order that he might broadcast the blessing of the gospel. Trouble cannot bind the gospel, for it is a mighty comforter in troubling times. Folks, uh, time may condemn some writings to accuracy and uselessness, but it cannot and will not condemn the ageless word of of God. Paul not only found pleasure in the distribution of the gospel, but he found it in the daring for the gospel. Uh, we find this daring for the gospel. Look at, at verses uh, 14 through 16. It says, uh, And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction or affliction to my bonds. So, you know, it was common knowledge that Paul was awaiting trial before Nero, uh, Nero. And those who were timid about witnessing were possessed with a new boldness. Courage was replacing cowardice. This new bravery and boldness were beginning in their lives. Persecution was causing progress. And Peter and John uh, were also persecuted for the gospel's sake. The rest of the brethren preached with boldness because of what was happening to him. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Great persecution was against the church at Jerusalem, and the church was scattered abroad. The result was the spread of the gospel. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 1 it says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Uh, verse 4 in Acts 8 says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. We find that Paul lived above his circumstances using his prison cell to preach Christ. Others were challenged by his example. And if we are chosen to suffer pain, poverty, persecution, 
would we be defeated under our circumstance? Paul formed joy from something else. Uh, we look and, and we must uh, realize these things that Paul used these things to bring joy and not sadness or depression in his life. Uh, we find the defense of the gospel here in verses 17 and 18. Uh, in Philippians 1, in verse 17 and 18, Paul wrote, But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Uh, the gospel needs no defense. But there is a need for defense against the misrepresentations or the corruptions of the gospel. Some were preaching Christ for selfish motives, jealousy, and out of resentment for Paul. Paul, however, was not concerned about who got the credit or if others discredited him. But he was rejoicing in that Christ was being preached nevertheless. Uh, God can use any portion of his word even when the vessel does not measure up to his standards. Even though God cannot honor the motive of the messenger, he will honor and bless his word. You know, folks, we have to realize that even in uh, our day to day, just as in Paul's day, there are those that are out there that will present, they will bring God's word, and they will not do it in uh, an appropriate manner and do it for the right reasons. But, however, as long as it is the truth, it is being preached. So even the, the motives of man cannot stop the gospel from being preached and being brought out unto truth unto man. So we find the priorities of Paul. Look at uh, in verse 19. It says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and the joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. So we find the priorities of Paul. We find, for one, a dependence upon Paul there in verse 19. Uh, uh, the dependence of Paul was upon God. Uh, you know, whatever good or evil came to Paul, his hope remained the same. The reasons for his steadfastness was God-given knowledge. Uh, this is the security of the scriptures. The word know there in that verse that Paul uses here means to know with certainty. There are some things, however, we don't know. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Romans 8, verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, 
but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are other things that we have limited knowledge in. And some of these things we can know. Uh, And Romans 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good for them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, There in verse uh, Philippians 1 and verse 19, we find the word this, for I know that this, uh, this in Philippians 1, 19 is one of the all things in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Uh, Paul knew that for him, everything would turn out for the best. Um, The words, my salvation, are, uh, uh, are controversial. What does he mean by this phrase? The Greek word is sotera, and it has several possible meanings. One is safety or well-being, and it is used in Mark chapter 15 and verse 30 where Jesus is told, Save thyself. If this is the meaning Paul had in mind, then he felt the need uh, then he felt that he would be released. Secondly, we find uh, it could refer to health or, gen- or general well-being. Paul's problems were for his happiness, usefulness, joy, and peace in eternity. Whatever the meaning, Paul felt that everything would turn out for the best. Uh, we, we notice Uh, that Paul knew that he had two great supports. He had the support of the prayers of his friends, and this was human support. And also he had the support of the Holy Spirit, which is divine support. Paul speaks of the supply of the Spirit. This word means a provision of giving what is necessary for assistance or help a full and bountiful supply. The Holy Spirit will supply and the Holy Spirit will support us. He was sent to this world so that we might enjoy several things. Some of them, of these things are His companionship. John 14 and verse 16 And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and that he may abide with you forever. Uh, Might enjoy his counsel. In John 14, verse 26, But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. We find his courage for witnessing. In John 15, verse 26 and 27, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Verse 27 says, And ye shall also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Uh, He shall supply his conviction in ministry. What about John 16 and verse 7? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is uh, expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. We find also his calling or prayer for us. Romans 8 verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And uh, we find his communication or his words. Matthew 10, verse 19 and 20. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. 
And we find lastly his care or provision of power. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power which worketh in us. Uh, Philippians 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We need the security of the scriptures, the supplication of the saints, and the supply of the Spirit. We need to depend upon the Word of God, prayer, and the Holy Spirit's power in our life. Well, folks, it's about time that we're going to have to to stop for this evening. But I hope and pray that you would contemplate about what we've heard reread the scriptures that we've been over knowing that whatever Paul was going through he didn't let it get him down but he used it to help him to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ Um, let's pray dear Lord we do come thanking you once again Lord for the time that we were able to be together and Lord I pray now that you would Uh, take this word that we spread that we put out this evening Lord and that you would use it in the hearts of those that uh, view this and and hear it Lord for their betterment and for uh, for their edification Lord Lord we love you we thank you in Jesus precious and holy name we pray amen well Here's Brother Dwayne signing off once again, and we uh, will we look forward to seeing you uh, this coming Sunday morning, Sunday school nine forty, church service ten fifty. Signing off. God bless you.